Oh, that guy's brakes are smoking. Oof, smells terrible. The smells of the road are very interesting. But today I'm headed from Curitiba all the way to Iguazu Falls. If Iguazu sounds familiar, that's because it happens to be the largest waterfalls in the world. Not the second, not the third, the largest. Third time I go, and I can tell you it is epic. It is so awesome. Currently on the road, it's been a long drive. I got about 700 kilometers today, so it's a bit of a long day. The weather was supposed to be horrible, but look at this, it's beautiful. I cannot complain. And unfortunately, the drivers here have been pretty bad. So if you're in Brazil, headed to Iguazu Falls, just watch out. A guy literally a foot away from me earlier as he was trying to pass me. It was uh, not safe at all. Well, see, here's one of the things. Ugh. The feeling of the hot exhaust in the air of these trucks on my face is just not great. Uh, that's the name of the game though, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, having a motorcycle is so great, so much power on the hills. Like these poor people, quite, quite tough. Anyway, this is the beautiful jungle stuff of Brazil. It's quite beautiful, but it comes at the expense of always having rain. That's the issue. No, no, no. Falar una ambulancia? Sí. Hace cuánto tiempo? No fue ahora, ya debe estar llegando. Aquí viene el guardián. Okay. ¿Un coyote? ¿Cómo? ¿Un coyote? No, no. Está quebrado. Está hablando, está, la, los ojos están bien, entonces no hay concusión. Está sangrando profundamente. The one thing I do know is that he had a broken leg. Luckily, I tried to make sure he didn't have a concussion. He was comprehensive. Uh, the military does have some training, so uh, they were able to just hold his head still, which you're not supposed to take the helmet off. Um, but he was moving around his neck anyway, but it's always best not to move it. Ambulance is on his way. It always gets you. It always hits you in the emotional, uh, always gets you in the heart, you know? Because we bikers, we share a common interest. We, we have common blood. <clears throat> we're, we're like brothers on the road. So when you see a fellow brother down, it's, it's really hard. It just serves as a reminder that you should always be careful, always be vigilant. So sometimes anything can happen at any point. You just should take precautions wherever you can. Have all the safety gear that you need to have, especially on this road. If you guys can see in my other videos, I was wearing very thin pants and like khaki pants. Today I'm wearing full gear, as you can see. Uh, and basically I choose my gear on the day that I have. Today's a very long day on the road, uh, so that's why I have full gear. After seeing that, my driving has become incredibly precautious. You know, if anything, that serves an example to take it slow. There's no hurry in getting to your final destination. The point is to get to your final destination. Do whatever you have to do as a motorist to make it home safe. Is that a lot of people take out medical insurance when they travel. Uh, on the motorcycle, you think you need like crazy international motorcycle insurance, health insurance, a whole deal, uh, medical evacuation, spot GPS. I think about that. When I first did Alaska to Argentina, I took a spot with the emergency evacuation. Yes, it would only cost me like $300 for the year, so it's not a bad deal. However, if you're in a life or death situation on the road, on the motorcycle, there's usually gas stations a few miles apart. Uh, the most you'll see is 200 miles, 300 miles apart. And what I have found and what I've noticed when I do crash and when other people crash is that other drivers and other vehicles on the road will stop to help you faster than your medical evacuation can get to you. The time it goes in the system, it gets the satellites, uh, they send out units. Uh, it, it can take a few hours or an hour or two, I don't know. The moment you crash on the road, other motorists will stop. Any part in the world, you will get help a lot faster from local people than any, anywhere else. If, you think about, if you're thinking about getting out that $1,000 medevac insurance, you know, that's always a choice. But in my experience, people will help you quicker than the medical evacuation can help you. If you need like some serious surgery, I'm pretty sure you don't want it done in Peru. Uh, at a public hospital. You know, it's, you're gonna get a lot better care back home if you're Australian, if you're New Zealand, if you're American, if you're Canadian, if you're Mexican. So it's, you know, it's up to you to decide if you have a really traumatic day uh, where you want things to happen for you. Remember, people are generally very nice and kind and want to make sure that you're okay. 
They're not gonna try to rob you as you're laying there bleeding with a broken leg. And plus, you'll have a lot more people come to you, so it'd be a lot harder, so. Well, what a beautiful end of the day, huh? Look at that. This is why you ride motorcycles. Well, thanks for joining me today. Hope to see you tomorrow. Take care.